The movie Deadpool may raise the question, how realistic is Wade Wilson's superpowers? In the first Deadpool movie, we see Wade attain a superhuman healing power which allows him to regrow severed limbs and organs at a crazy fast rate. So how far has science gone into making this a reality? Well firstly, what is a body capable of naturally? So we can regenerate on a cellular and tissue level. We can regenerate our epidermis, which is the outer layer of our skin. So if skin cuts are not too deep, they can regrow without scarring. Our bones can join back together if we rejoin the pieces with a screw or cast. We can regrow bits of our gut lining, blood vessels, nerves, etc. But not complex structures like an entire organ or limb. This is because replacing an entire hand for example, is not simply about just growing and replacing some tissue. The body needs to also make bones, muscles, blood vessels and nerves for a complete recovery. There are adult stem cells present which are unspecialized cells that can turn into other cells, however they haven't got the capability to regrow an entire limb. As a result, scientists are studying animals that are capable of regrowing body parts to understand how it can be done in humans. We currently use salamanders, which are a group of amphibians that look like lizards as models of limb regeneration. Salamanders have the ability to regrow entire limbs and parts of major organs and so we use them as a template to see what a perfect regeneration would look like. By understanding how they grow new body parts and how they grow them so well, we may be able to reverse engineer it into humans. In theory, it is possible for humans to one day be able to regrow entire body parts. We are able to develop an entire organ system while in the womb from just the genetic information. Moreover, there are no special genes for regeneration and the genetic machinery in humans and salamanders are not too different. However, salamanders possess certain genes that are turned off in humans. By understanding and identifying key genes that play a role in producing new body parts, we may be able to mimic the effects in humans to promote growth of amputated organs. However, just identifying and mimicking the genes and the cells needed for limb regrowth is not enough. A lot of the animal models that have excellent regrowth abilities have a different adult state to human adult states. They tend to conserve numerous embryonic traits which provide them the best environment to regrow their limbs. This means to allow for the regrowth of body parts, we have to resemble the events and conditions that occur during embryonic development. Firstly, we would have to suppress the immune system. The adaptive immune system takes time and maturation to fully develop. This means that a full immune system may only be acquired after development or after birth. As a result, the immune system is not exposed to certain embryonic cells which disappear at later stages of development. These cells may have a major contribution to limb regrowth, but because the immune system has not been exposed to them after birth, when the same embryonic cells are expressed following an amputation, they get attacked by the immune system as it thinks they are foreign and harmful cells. Secondly, we have to maintain an environment to promote the signaling pathways for the growth of cells into organs. This means to optimize limb regeneration, the cells and tissues must be in an environment where they have a water content above 80% and a hyaluronate content of around 30 to 40 micrograms per milligram of cell. This is a similar environment to that seen in animals that can regrow large organs and may be key to promote limb regeneration in humans. Lastly, a series of drugs would have to be administered to activate genes and growth factors required to stimulate growth. Considerations would have to be made to minimize the effects of these drugs on other parts of the body, otherwise it may result in uncontrollable tumor growth in other areas. However, there is one big consideration to take into account. Imagine scientists find the right drugs to allow our body parts to regrow. They figure out the right dosages to administer them in and they develop the right technology to allow the wound to be in the optimum environment to promote growth. How long will it actually take for a body part to grow back? Well, when a lizard grows back a missing tail, its cells can grow at a rate of 0.25 to 1.5 millimeters a day, with 1.5 millimeters being achieved only in the best conditions. Now, a human body part is much larger than a lizard's tail, so imagine growing back a lost limb, which is 550 millimeters in length, which regrows at a speed of 0.5 millimeters a day. It would take about 1,100 days, which is around three years, to grow back. Now, imagine having to 
continuously take drugs and suppress your immune system for three years, suddenly prosthetic limbs may become the preferred option. To sum up, we are far from making Deadpool superpowers a reality and even if we do, it certainly won't be as easy as just laying around on the sofa and waiting for your hand to quickly grow back so that you can go off and fight some villains. If you have found this video interesting, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos.